Hello everybody, Joe Warbeck coming at you. Welcome back. Today we are going to take our next dive into Social Security. So if you haven't watched the basics video, I need you to make sure you start with that one because we're going to build off of that and some of the terminology I'm going to use today we covered in the first video. So please click the link, watch the first video. Today we're going to talk about benefits. So one of the first things they added was spousal benefits. So we're going to start with spousal benefits. Spousal benefits basically say that if the higher earner, and everything we're going to talk about today is based on earners. It's not based about on sex. It's not a male, female. This is a higher earner, lower earner issue. So if the higher earner has applied and attained age 62, then the lower earner upon attaining age 62 can also apply and receive up to half of the higher earner's benefits. Now that sounds simple enough, but there's a lot of fine points. For instance, if the higher earner claims early, they're going to get less. We learned in the first video that if you claim at 62 and your full retirement age is 66, you're only going to receive 75% of your benefit. If the spouse also claims at 62, they'll only receive 75% of 50% of the benefit. So claiming early and claiming an early spousal benefit is very detrimental to your future income. And the way it works is it goes off of your PIA. We talked about PIA before, your primary insurance amount. So let's use some examples. Let's say the higher earner's PIA is $2,000 and they're 66 years of age today, and they're going to apply for the benefit. Let's say that their spouse, the lower earner's PIA is $500, and they're also 66, and they're going to apply. If they both applied on their own, the higher earner would get 2,000, the lower earner would get 500. But because they're married, the higher earner will get 2,000, the lower earner will get $1,000. Half of the higher earner's benefit and the higher earner gets 100%. That spousal benefit in a nutshell. You can receive up to 50% of the higher earner's benefit. Now spousal benefits have been around for a while. They aren't going anywhere and they're really interesting because it doesn't just work for your primary spouse. It also works for divorced spouse and it works for widow, which we're going to cover that in a little bit. Now, in the last video, we talked about the 8% deferred credit, meaning if that higher earner pushes off their benefit to age 70, they can get an 8% deferred credit each and every year. That deferred credit cannot be passed on to the lower earner spouse. So the lower earner spouse can only get up to 50% of the higher earner's benefit capped at their full retirement age. So let's say that higher earner doesn't apply at 66. Let's say they push off till 70 and they get that extra 8%. The lower earner will only ever get 50% of the 2,000 plus cost of living. So if that higher earner pushes their 2,000 off for four years till age 70, all those cost of livings are going to accrue and the lower earner will get 50% of the 2,000 plus the cost of living. Now let's talk about divorced spousal benefits. In order to qualify for a divorced spousal benefit, you have to be unmarried at the time you're collecting. So if you were married for 10 years and divorced, if you get remarried, you cannot collect on that, on that previous ex-spouse. Now, if you've been divorced for at least two years, your ex-spouse does not need to have applied. So now if you're married, the only way you can collect spousal benefits is if the higher earner has applied. But when you've been divorced for at least two years, you were married for 10 years, you've been divorced for at least two years, you can go out and apply and receive half of your ex-spouse's benefit. They don't need to have applied. You don't need to know where they live. You don't need to know what's going on. They aren't notified that you're receiving half of their benefit. It's a great benefit that you can get, but you had to have been married for 10 years. I'll tell you a story. I had a client that came to see me a few years ago. She said, I'm getting a divorce. I said, I'm so sorry to hear that but may I ask how long you were married? She said, I've been married for nine years and six months. I said, stop, do not get a divorce yet. I said, you need to go back to court and ask for a six month extension because if you're married for 10 years, you'll get half of his social security. She did just that. She went back six months later, 10 years, and one day to the day they signed the divorce decree. And this November, she is going to file at her full retirement age and collect 
her spousal, her divorced spousal benefits. Now, if you're married for 10 years and divorced and married again for 10 years and divorced, then you can choose whichever of those partners had a higher PIA. So this is a great benefit if you've been divorced, make sure you look into it. Now, with all these benefits, they can get tricky. Your best bet is to seek professional advice. If you want to reach out to us, send me an email at joe at sequinox.com, the email's listed below, and ask us, hey, can you run a report? We can run a social security report and show you how to maximize your income. So we've talked about spousal benefits, we've talked about divorce spousal benefits. Now we're going to talk about widow or survivor benefits. Survivor benefits work that the lower income earners benefit will go away when the higher income earner passes and their benefit will be transferred to the lower income earner. So let's say we have a couple. We have Pat and we have Tracy. Pat is the higher earner. Tracy is the lower earner. Let's say Pat is in their 80s and they are collecting $2,000 a month. And Tracy is in their 80s also, and they're collecting $1,000 a month. If Pat were to die, Tracy would lose their $1,000 a month, and Pat's $2,000 a month would swing on over, and Tracy would then be getting the $2,000 a month. So it's important to remember this. Number one, it's nice that you get the higher benefit, but you lose your own, so you could lose up to a third of your income. You need to plan ahead for this. Something we do for our clients, we recommend a small life insurance policy to replace that lower value when it goes away. The other thing to think about is that you want the higher earner to push their benefit off as long as possible so they can get that 8% deferred credit like we talked about in the last video so that by the time they apply, they're getting the biggest benefit possible just in case they pass first, that benefit is transferable to their surviving spouse. And if they don't die first, and the lower earner dies first, well, now they just have a higher income for the rest of their life. So it's important that you think about this. When you're married, you can't think about break even. You have to think about both spouses. So the higher earner should try to push theirs off so that they get a bigger benefit and the lower earner can receive that benefit if the higher earner dies first. So we talked about how the spousal widow, widower benefit works if they've been collecting. But if you have not collected yet, it's a little bit difficult to understand. It can get a little bit complicated. If the individual dies before attaining their full retirement age, so let's say we have Pat. Pat dies at 63 and has never collected, okay? Their benefit, their higher benefit of age 66 is transferable to the survivor if they choose to claim. In order to claim survivor benefits, you must attain at least age 60. However, if you claim at age 60, you are gonna get a significantly reduced benefit. The other downfall to claiming early is you have limited income earnings outside of Social Security. Each year that gets indexed for inflation. Right now it's around $18,000 a year. So if you're earning over $18,000 a year, you're a survivor and you wanna claim your survivor pension, Every dollar you earn over $18,000, you are going to lose $0.50 cents of your Social Security survivor benefit. So sometimes it makes more sense to wait until you've retired to collect your survivor benefit. The other benefit of waiting till full retirement age or waiting until you retire is you're allowed to collect your survivor benefit and you can push your own benefit off. Beyond full retirement age, begin getting that 8% deferred credit and if at any point in the future your own benefit grows larger than the survivor benefit, you can turn off the survivor benefit and start collecting your own benefit. I have personally helped dozens of survivors do just this. Retire in their early 60s. You retire at 62 or 63. They begin collecting their survivor benefit and wait until they turn 70 to turn their own benefit on and they get some income now and a lot more income later. Now, what if the individual, the higher earner claimed early. Let's say they claim at 62. Remember, if you claim at 62, you could have a benefit reduced down to 75 or 70% of your full benefit. If they die before hitting full retirement age, the surviving spouse can wait until their full retirement age to collect the widow benefit. And at that point, they'll collect 100% of the higher earner's benefit that they would have had at full retirement age. Now, if they push it off beyond their full retirement age, let's say you have somebody who's 68, 69 years of age, they've never collected and they pass. 
whatever age they've attained, let's say they make it to 69, whatever their benefit would be at 69, that is the benefit that passes over to the survivor benefit. But again, it depends upon the age of the survivor benefit. If they take it at 62, they're gonna get say 75% of the benefit. If they wait till full retirement age, they can get 100% of the benefit. It does not make any sense for a survivor to ever push off the survivor benefit beyond their full retirement age. So if you are a widow or a widower and you're a survivor, don't wait beyond your full retirement age to collect your benefit. Something to think about here. As I said before, we want the higher earner to push off their benefit because if the, lo if the higher earner takes it early and dies, they're going to push a lot less money to their survivor. So. I want you to think about this. I know I've said this before, but if you're married, you need to think about married couples benefits. Think about spousal benefits. Think about survivor benefits. If you have any questions about this, give us a call, send us an email. We can put together a detailed report showing you up to five different options, showing you what your cumulative benefit would look like, what your survivor benefit would look like, and we can run through each and every one of those options, talk about the tax advantages and disadvantages of taking it early or pushing it off. This is a very important issue. This is not something you leave to your friend or your neighbor to help you discuss. Sit down and talk with a qualified planner. Talk with a certified financial planner. Allow them to help you to make the decision that is going to suit you best. I hope you enjoyed this issue on Social Security. If again, if you haven't watched the last one, make sure you watch part one, the basics. This is part two where we're talking about benefits and the next chapter is going to be on how to retire tax-free using my patented reverse retirement system. If you like this video, make sure you hit like. If you wanna subscribe, send us your email. I look forward to seeing you at the next video.